What's going on, my amigos? Thank you for showing up. I'm Susu. For those of you that don't know, absolute pleasure having you. And we're going to go straight into Lululemon. It's a bit smoky in here, I know. There's people out here, man. They're always blazing that wanna, baby. Blazing that wanna. All right, check this. Lululemon. That's what we're looking at. The way we want to do this is with Lulu. Um, I had just been looking at this Friday. So Lululemon. This is why we're looking at this. I'm going to really quickly show you Apple, Facebook, and why now we're looking at this. What we can do is we can go into my uh, pictures, actually, because I believe I have uh, some charts of pictures of the video of the new section of the studio. It's absolutely beautiful. That's Trill Digital over there. Okay, so look. That's Lululemon right there, but we're not going to look at that just yet. I want you guys to see why we're looking so strongly at Lululemon. So check it out. This is Apple, and this shape here is called a rising wedge. And whenever you see a rising wedge, you want to pay close attention to a bearish downturn. Now, this is what happens. In a rising wedge, we're going to take a picture of the picture so we can work on this because I want you guys to see something that a lot of inexperienced traders do not realize. So inexperienced traders do not realize that actually charts do not affect news. News is a reaction of charts. So what happens is if you go back and look, this is my belief. I mean, you could say it's not true, but this is my belief is that uh, the charts reach a certain point that where the news would be most effective. And then at that point, what will happen is they will release news. And, you know, a lot of times news was already known about weeks in advance, sometimes months in advance. I mean, they just choose the right time to do it. So often they'll wait for shorts to kill it to a certain point. And then once it breaks through the Bollinger Bands, you know, when MACD reaches a certain point when it's going up, there's always some mechanism of action where it's like the news is a function of the chart. And the reason why is because they get the most impact out of that. The chart tells them if something's super oversold and the shorts are just jumping in, you get a high short interest and all of a sudden, boom, news. And now it just skyrockets, right? So news is a function of charts. This is my belief. Here you can see where that's a perfect example. So look at all this, right? All this stuff taking place in Apple and it's just bouncing around this rising wedge. And then look what happens. It runs totally out of space at what point perfectly aligned perfectly aligned with the earnings report can you tell me how something that has formed over let's took three months long and literally when it runs out of space is exactly the day before of and the day after its earnings report there is no way someone can convince me that that news was not a function of the charts so you can see, like I said, over and over again, it's just getting tighter and tighter. And then what happens is the news comes out and it's like, boom. But of course, like I told you, I already, I always bet, bet at the top and then it just drops. And then the next day it drops. So I don't know if all of you guys are aware, but that move ended up being from the time I told you to bet it when it reaches around 220, 221. Had you bet against that when it was at that range, the 210 puts were $19. They went to $990 on Friday. Some of you guys who are close to me are aware I had one of the worst days in trading I ever had on Thursday because I went and sold 50 contracts of 210 puts that I bought for between anywhere from $20. I started buying them at $20, $15, all the way down to $10, then sold them at $8 only for it to go up an hour, 37 minutes from $8 to $396. And then from there, the next day, it went to $990 top. So I was in a lot of pain over that. And the reason why, because I don't care who you are, $16,000 is an unimaginable amount of money. From from eight to 990, that is a 12,345% return. So that's an unbelievable loss, even though I didn't actually take a loss. In fact, at the end of the day, I just piled on Nvidia and Apple and made like a 40, 49% entire portfolio return in my options uh, so it was still a blessing i still got blessed but i would have got blessed with like five six hundred percent return and that would have just been astonishing and i would have been able to a bit brag for that and say guys look remember that play i told you bite well look i did it i stuck with it and bing bong boom and i didn't all right this is you guys saw apple now let's take a look at facebook here's facebook and again we let's work on this we got another rising wedge look at this rising wedge no one can deny it right and then look what happens falls out they it falls out and right before earnings then look what earnings does it tries to push it back this is just the people who are very bullish on it and know it's about to drop big time they knew it they knew it they knew it and what happened was they last hurrah you know they bought into the earnings to shake out the shorts force the shorts to cover to force buyers and bullish and retail investors to follow in to accumulate their shares away from them so that they could of course sell out and drop it and then look at that it just collapses okay and just collapses down to 188 so no one could tell me a rising wedge is not a very effective chart to be watching. And now let's take a look at what we have here with Lululemon. 
we have a rising wedge. Look at that, absolutely stunningly accurate rising wedge, meaning that to the point where so far as of yesterday, oh, forgive me, Friday, it dropped down to the rising wedge. And so you have an opportunity here to say, is the market so dirty, so bad, so so out of line with reality that it's gonna crack the bottom band now? It's gonna, is it gonna drop that through that bottom trend line right now on Monday? And then of course, if that happens, the collapse begins because it will collapse if it breaks that. Because this is a long-term trend line that the rising wedge is, is built on a long-term trend line of a one-year trend line. This is no bullshit. This isn't three weeks. This is the entire year. Look at it, just all year. It keeps reverting back to it right there. Boom, boom. Here, let's, let's bring it out. Look at that, boom, boom, boom. You know, it's back to it right now. We got the blue arrow right there. Just touched and barely cracked through the bottom of it. So the whole point of me pointing this out is to say you have a very crazy situation here because look, it does have some open-ended space at the top where it could go here. If you see it bounce, maybe the best things to play calls into this rise and then sell the calls after they get back up to that 192 range, that 190 range, you know, just sell them off then. I mean, it's at 178, so 192 would be an unimaginably big return, over a thousand percent. So it's up to you. Do you want to try to play at that tight, or do you just want to go, okay, let's get into it, and once we get 100, 200 percent return, you know, once it goes like this and gets like, you know, actually we're too far there. Let's say, let's say it just gets to right here, which would be like 185. Just take it there. I mean, you already have over 100% return at that point. If that's what you want to do, let me show you an easy way to play that. And this is probably what I'm going to do because I'm not actually sure if it's ready to break. It's like people are trying to keep this run alive. They're trying to keep the stock market run alive. But as so much damage has been done over the last three days, over a thousand point drop, it bounced up off that bottom. But there's a thousand point drop and that's difficult to get out of. Okay, check this out. So what you can do is since it's at 178.91, let's say on Monday, which is tomorrow, it opens up at 180. What you can do is buy a put call spread. And what this does is if it really moves in either direction, you're hedging against you're hedging against losses because you're putting money on both sides. So if it's a big drop or a big rise, you're going to make money. And this is what you do. So I'm going to say when it gets to 180 is when you try to play the, the, the uh, put call spread. Because here's where you're going to wait for the price to get to, right there in the center. As it reaches 180, what you want to do is buy one contract. In my case, I would buy three contracts, but in your case, one contract of the 185. Let's change this to a highlighter. Okay, let's go here and change it to a highlighter and change the green. So right there, you want to play the 185 calls. That means if it goes up $5, then it reaches your price. And at the same exact time, you want to buy the 175 puts, meaning you want to bet it goes down to 175. Now, there's a reason why you do this. If it goes to 180, the 185 calls, which would be the one at the bottom, forgive me, uh, let's change this one to, uh, let's change this and change that to red so we have difference of color there. So the green one, which is the 185 calls, betting it'll go up, those right there will be valued closer to about 150, okay? And the 175 puts, which are now at 180 to 189, those would be about a one, a dollar, 150, $1.50 per share but remember with the options contract, there's 100 shares in it, so it's 150, $1.50 times 100 or 150. So you have 150 and 150 for one contract of each. That's $300 you spent. Now the reason why it's so important to try to do it right at 180, because 180 is five above 175 and five below 185, which means you're getting it right in the middle. So the 185 calls should be nearly the same exact price as the 175 puts. It's a $10 spread, 185 to 175, but they're both $5 away from the price of 180, which is in the middle. So this is why you do the put call spread right there, because then you have the same amount of money. If you got 300 on calls and it's one contract and 100 on puts, you're in trouble because there, if it goes the way of the puts, the puts can go up 200 percent. And they're still not even going to, they're going to barely cover your loss you took on the $300 for the call. So you want them to be equal. And this is why if it goes to 185 from 180, what's going to happen is your 185 calls, which you bought for a dollar 50 or $150 per contract will go to 450 per contract. They'll go up about 300 bucks because it's going to go up 200%, 150 to 200%. Your 175 puts, which you bet to go against it, will lose money, but they won't lose 100%, they'll lose like 70 or 80. 
So what you do is the moment it goes up and gets near that 185 range, you sell the calls, which are now up 150 to 200 percent. So you get 150, and if you get 200 percent, that's plus 300 because it's 150 plus 150. That's 300. You get the 300 plus the original amount you spent, which was 150. That's 450. For the puts, which you'll lose money on because it didn't go in that direction, you won't lose it all. So you probably have like 30 to 40 bucks left. But that's still 30 or 40 bucks left on top of the 450 you now have. So think about that. You have 450 plus 30 to 40. Let's call it 40. Now that's $490 that you have. You started with 300. Let's take a look at what that return would be. The return on that, so if you do 190 divided by 300, because that's the difference, you made 190 bucks because you got 490 and you started with 300, that is a 63% return. This is You're just not going to get that from anywhere else in the market. It is a 63% return. Now, if it goes the other way and totally collapses, you might have it down to 170. There you go. You got your thousand. I mean, forgive me. You got your three, 400 percent return. So the point is, how serious are you about thinking if it goes up, it'll stay going up. And if it goes down, it'll stay going down. However serious you are about that. For instance, those people, when they listen to my play about Apple going down, if they were serious when they bought the 210 puts and they were like, I don't give a shit. I think it's still going down further. Had they done that, then their play they bought for $19, they could have sold it the next day when it was up, you know, 400%, 500% after Apple went up and dropped. Or they could have held till Thursday, which was a scary day because it went up and they would have lost almost all their money. Would have been down to $8. And if they just kept holding, like, I don't give a shit, it ended up dropping all the way to 201 the next day Apple did on Friday. From that point, they would have been up thousands of percent, like four or 5,000%. So that's the thing, right? Where's your risk? How serious is that money to you? Are you willing to accept its loss when you bet it? And that's what a lot, even I wasn't, right? That's why I sold to capture whatever money I had left and say, minimize my loss at 400. And I said, I'll just sold, I'll just sell it and not take a f anything more than a $400 loss. Well, the $59, which is why we sold it. Me and my wife agreed to sell it because it was at, it was at 2,059 and the account was just at 2,400 and like 95. So I was like, if it goes on in more 59, it's going to fall under 2000. And I haven't been under that in a very long time. And so she's like, no, did you just take it? And again, it was a bad decision. But the point is, I still said when Apple started dropping, fuck it and threw money at it threw like 60% of my money and woke up with a 50% return the next day. So I was still able to capitalize on something. And that's what you have to be willing to do. So that's the Lululemon play. You can either say hell with it. I like Sully's play for just putting it if it breaks the line or I like the calls right now. So it bounces off that bottom line and heads back towards the top line on the uh, as I showed you on that that uh, rising wedge, which would be right here. So remember, your option is to that it's going to break. This breaks and then it just falls down. Or your other option is that you think right there's the bottom and now it's going to go up like this. You can play either one of those or since you're right on the line around the 180 range and it can do either one. You can do the put call spread and that's called hedging your bet so that you have something here in case it flies. You got something there in case it flies and then you sell the one that's up a lot because then you capture that gain and guarantee it. And then you focus on the other one, either leave it there to see if it comes back down to it. And then you might even win on that side a little bit, or you just go, no, no, no. I want to get back and focus on something else. So you just sell it off and take that money and put it on top of the profit you got. So there's the play. I love you guys. I'm always looking out for you. And I want you guys to learn about this stuff. Now, I'm going to do one more video after this. And that's going to be specifically about some things that I saw in the market talking about that news as a function of the charts. And I want you guys to see this and tell me what you think. Thanks for showing up so I can show out. Peace. Broken. 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 Broken.